Hey TCS TV viewers, it's Dave and Evelyn from The Camera Store and today we've come down to the Palomino Smokehouse. And that's because we're going to do a special feature on the Hasselblad X2D100C. Today we have a special guest, Ron Bubnick, who you might remember from some previous episodes. He's also a resident photo nerd at the camera store, so we're going to meet up with him and hear what he did with the Hasselblad X2D100C. All right, Ron, we're here in the Palomino, which is a barbecue and smokehouse by day. And then at nighttime, we're actually in the showroom where a lot of local bands around Calgary have performed. So let's talk about why you love this X2D camera. I mean, we're talking about a camera that's very different than what's on the market contemporarily. Mm -hmm. A lot of cameras right now are being manufactured in Japan. They're cameras that are designed with a lot of functionality in mind. So they, they throw as many features as they can to create tools that are good for both photography and video. Now this right. is different because it's actually handmade in Sweden. Yep. So we have the Scandinavian design in this camera and it follows a lot of that same ethos of having something that's minimalist. Yep. So what is it about it that you love? Um, for the most part, shooting with intent and shooting a little bit more slowly is something that I find myself doing nowadays. What do you normally shoot with, Ron? Right now, currently a, a Leica M10 and my Leica M6. So yeah, it's definitely a refreshing change to jump into medium format digital and have something so incredibly elegant. It treats you like just a front-end user. You've got a very, very simplified interface, which makes you want to use the camera more. It felt just at home in hand. And my whole interaction with it, and definitely testing the autofocus, which is something that had remained kind of a carryover complaint from the previous iterations. Well, let's talk about that a little yeah. bit of, of what kind of autofocus system we're talking about. So this mm -hmm. uses a hybrid of contrast detect as right. well as phase detection. However, it doesn't have like continuous tracking autofocus no. that you find in a lot of other contemporary cameras. But in something like this, where you have musicians that, from the photos you were showing me, are relatively in a static position where you're able to utilize this focus system for what it's good at. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Can you One, talk about how that impacted you? Um, actually, it, it, it worked just fine in and out of this poor lighting condition because I'd be varying my, my shutter speed all over the place just to try and see, or at least bring everything up to a lit level enough that I could say, oh yes, this is what I'm gonna, who I'm about to shoot, the angle, and subsequently how much light I'm gonna need from my external strobe to stop them. I was super happy with it. If you're present, the thing is absolutely amazing. And we'll put in the work, and for the most part, we'll nail out of focus when need be. So do you, you didn't feel like you were missing anything from not having continuous autofocus? No, no. As you can see, I was really close to the stage, so it'll allow me to stop, recompose for like two seconds, and I fire. And this thing, even at 400 ISO, with a strobe was really starting to shine at certain points once I really started getting my bearings with it. Yeah. Now, of course, with it being a 100 megapixel mm -hmm. medium format sensor camera, did you feel that you realized the full potential of that? Like, could you really see a difference in what you were able to achieve compared to what you're normally used to shooting with your Leica? Certainly. The files are massive. 250 megabyte RAWs. Uh, How do you deal with those too? Also, sadly, when I connected <laughs> it, to, so when I connected it to my computer, which is roughly six years old, it made the most horrid fan sound the moment I started to upload all the shots off of this thing. But it is still alive, and bringing up those files can be painful in some cases. But I can deal with that. Did you feel like you were still kind of stealthy with it? Like, did it feel like you were bringing along? Oh, Such a big, um, <laughs> expensive piece of equipment. No, I, I very nicely cleaned it all off, but this thing had black gaffer tape all over it because I knew what I was bringing to the venue. Maneuvering around this camera, actually really, really fun. 
once you get acclimated to it, it once again, as Ev was indicating, it doesn't beat you over the head with like a barrage of different feature sets. You know, I absolutely love how this has such a graphic and simplistic menu design. For especially the type of work that you do, you don't need to go deep into menus and get lost in things like Not at especially all. Not this at all. having it pared down to just photo is also really nice too. Right. Like there is no video functionality on this Correct. camera. Zero. Th that's one hundred percent its intent. This is as minimalist as they could probably get into a very high-end luxury camera. This is definitely something designed by an app team. Touchscreen interface, giant icons, very little underneath those icons. It's so very it's clear. Very yeah. clean, very Linear. concise. Pictures and words, I'm, I'm, I'm a creature of very little needs. Yeah, it's very visual. Except for a 100 megapixel medium format. I know Dave has some other questions for right, you about right. this camera, but I'm very glad that you did this test because I think it really showed this. I'm glad a, I got to do this test. Right? Yeah, Aren't we so lucky we get I, to play with these cameras? It's really overtly nerdy and unnecessary, <laughs> but yes, I enjoy it. Okay, all. well you can nerd out somewhere with Dave. Yes. All right, Ron. First off, I'm kind of choked you didn't invite me to the Palomino for this night of, uh, of uh, photography mm, bliss. You liked it. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it, was, it was a good time. Come so on. I like this camera quite a bit. I like the minimalist design, right. but how did you find as far as like the stabilization work? It does have five axis stabilization. It was amazing. So what were you able to kind of like play around with? You were doing a lot of like uh, a second curtain sync and dragging your shutter a lot, right. right? What were you kind of your comfort levels as far as shutter speed goes? <laughs> one, one fourth of a second and ISO 400. Three quarter power flash output. Nerdy things aside, I was getting complete and utter detail while leaving ghosts all over my frame. And it was, it was so much fun that I wanted to experiment more and more with the camera as the night go, went on. And you probably see that through the pictures as they scroll through the video and you're like, oh, he really just started Wiling out towards the end, but I mean, yes, that it often makes happens. The you more, want yeah. to play with. Yeah, it. I mean, the more you drink, the, the better your shots get. That's what I. What I, I had when I was a shooting. singular <laughs> beer. Calm down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, don't look at my portfolio. Yeah. Then. <laughs> like, I just have to say, thankful I have mm. autofocus system. Yeah, now, I know. Now, with this camera, uh, it does have a beautiful viewfinder on it. It's 5.7 mm -hmm. million dots, um, but it also has a really good touchscreen on the back. That's 2.3. Right. Did you find you're using one over the other, or did you find in an environment like this, the viewfinder? Was your best friend? That whole night, I had used the viewfinder a total of two times. Really? Yeah. It was something that was noted when we first deboxed this at the shop, that holding it up to your eye would actually cause a noticeable amount of, of lag be, before it would actually come up. It is a very clean viewfinder. When it does come up, I will still use the viewfinder on this camera. Not always though. I, I, for the most of the show, I use the back screen, which was amazing at its job. So you're using the touch screen to touch where you wanted it to focus. Correct. Move the autofocus around, check yep. your exposure, of course, as well. So you find it usually mostly that way. Or my nose when I put it to <laughs> autofocus and it would touch the screen. So yeah, you'll, you'll, leave, you'll leave greasy spots on, on a $10,000 camera if you're not careful. Um, now the other thing about this camera that's quite unique is that mm. it has a one terabyte drive built into it. Now it's, it's like an SSD drive good. and they had to do that because they needed the kind of speed for these massive files to make right. this camera really functional. Right. You know, I have sort of a, a love-hate with that whole concept. What's your thoughts on having that size of a drive? Well, I, I mean, we're already uh, fawning over and, 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 and or pining over in the market. Uh, hitting those one and two terabyte thresholds for our writable media. Well, We're thing flirting is, with yeah, that. That's, that's going to be ground floor sooner uh, than later. Yeah, I mean, with right? an external you know, uh, drive or, or a CF Express card, right, you can take that out and replace it. But Correct. The internal one, if something goes wrong with that particular... Oh, you've right, got to send it back you, to you send it in. and who knows how much that's going to be. <laughs> So but that's, I mean, that's the debate there, is that how much are you investing in you know, potential memory you don't have access to, with the exception <laughs> of a, you know, the USB-C port? Yeah, like I, I can say that I had popped a 64 gig card in here and... Got four shots. Unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> uh, I had shot the whole show on raw and JPEG. So before I knew it, it started dumping immediately over to the internal hard drive on here. 
Uh, 64 gigs gets you roughly 120 shots uh, in both RAW and JPEG on this thing. Which is great because I shoot film, it's fine. <laughs> but yeah, the having that much space, I don't mind because when I was holding on to this, it was a death grip for that night. Well, I would yeah. hope so. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, and and plus, I had shot everything. Basically, I had a strobe. I was shoot. There was no strobe atop this camera the night that I shot. I had a re uh, remote transmitter and the the flash in my other hand. So I was stopping one fourth of a second, like so, which is kind of messy in this kind of lighting environment. But it provides outstanding hits when you're playing. So. Now, a lot of people haven't had their hands on this camera or mm -hmm. the opportunity to play around with the camera like we're fortunate enough to do. No, is because a, I keep is, on holding <laughs> on to it. Is there a certain feature or something about unique about this camera that you don't find in other camera systems that really sort of stands out for you? It's the real minimalist aesthetic. Like, I know they nailed it kind of in the first go. Uh, this is just a perfect refinement of that first go. I think their trajectory in so far as like the lenses, the overall design, the interface, I cannot wait to see them, and hopefully they do, replace the current XCD series and make more contemporary uh, series like so. It's one of the cleanest systems that I've used in a long time. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you obviously really, really like this camera. I do. If you could sum it up quickly, right, what, you know, what's your whole experience with this camera with all that you've used it? Fantastic tool for the person who is pretty much 100% present and does not need the, the weaponized speed of some other cameras that are definitely within its price range, if not a little bit south of it. This is for someone who wants to take their time. This is for someone who, dare I say, yes, works in studio all the time an absolutely stunning, stunning machine. <laughs> well, cool. Thanks, Ron, for, uh, for going out and taking these shots and, uh, Thank and explaining you your, uh, your side of it. Thank you for letting us play here at the Palomino and the camera store, of course, because I wouldn't have been here and I wouldn't <laughs> be playing with this thing if that wasn't the case. Sounds good. Well, Dave, we had a lot of fun talking to Ron at the Palomino about his experience with the X2D. It certainly is. Now, this is a camera that I don't think I would bring into a nightclub and shoot with. <laughs> and for me, it's more of a landscape camera, more of an architectural kind of camera, but not something I want to take into a nightclub that's going to be potentially, you know, beer strewn and, uh, it's, you know. It's true. It's a little risky, maybe. But I mean, that's the great thing about us working at the camera store is we always get to test out some awesome gear. And I know Ron feels the same way. Of course, we want to know, what do you guys think? What do you think of this test? What did you think of some of Ron's thoughts on the Hasselblad X2D? Let us know in the comments below. And have anybody else out there had use with a 100 megapixel camera for nightclub <laughs> photography? Make sure you follow us on Instagram. And if you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so we can catch you again very soon. Hey, thanks for checking out this episode. If you want to check out more of our recent content, click up here. And if you're a Canadian and you want to support local, check out thecamerastore.com down here.